All right, welcome. Episode number one of season two, new year, new season, Knights of the Square Tablet, joined by my co-host today, Coach Soder Dave, missing Scotty Games, going down to a microphone issue. But we are we are here to bring you guys uh, some Chivalry 2 news. Now, we're not the people who leaked the information, but we're going to talk about the leaked information. We got We got the green light. To, to go and do it so there's a, there's a lot of stuff to speculate on and the thing with this is we don't know how accurate everything is but going on the past the leaks generally give us most of what's going to be happening in the game so yeah we're going to talk about 2024 and chivalry 2 coach soder dave is fired up boys so uh yes yeah hello, uh, i'm everybody. gonna let um hello to scotty watching uh, we got a few leaks here. We weren't going to go over them out of respect for Torn Banner. Not that you should have any. <laughs> but Damn, um, Dave coming in hot. After, after they were put out there, I guess uh, we just asked them if they would be okay with it. And what did they say? Strata, I wasn't the one who asked you. What did they say? Um... <laughs> I wasn't even going to mention that. Uh, I, I was told that people are going to talk about it, so we're free to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So... We're we're just okay. gonna have discussion yeah. on on yeah on what we've heard and All right. some so what we say as we say it's it's a leak so it may be accurate it may not be accurate and there might be more to every situation and story than was leaked so we will know that in the coming months but at least it gives us stuff to talk about stuff that we do know is definitely coming to the game and stuff that we know won't be coming for a while to the game. Yeah, so um, I guess we should just get started with the chronologically you know ordered stuff um 2.10 which is going to be the upcoming update for chivalry 2 we expect it to come in quarter 1 2024 most likely january um but it could be delayed internally which i guess isn't really a delay because they didn't tell you anything <laughs> um so expect it either january february or march at latest 2.10 is going to have one new weapon that being the golden dog the Golden Dog is a two-handed blunt weapon with a spike on the end, and it shares the animation set of the Heavy Mace. I don't know what subclass it will be for. I'm going to assume it'll either be for Vanguard or Knight. <laughs> um, I, I would say it's not going to go on the Officer because it already has the Heavy Mace. So. Well, the current way that they've done um, new weapons is they seem to be hyper-fixated, um, almost autistically so, on the each new subclass getting a new weapon or i should say each subclass getting one new weapon and then moving on to the next um they very rarely if not at all have added multiple new weapons to one subclass so i don't really know who hasn't gotten a new weapon yet if i had to guess i think it would be the raider so it's not going to go on skirmisher obviously i, th I think raider would be a very real possibility I think the only thing that uh, that hasn't gotten one is the field engineer, which that might kind of make sense with a, a club with a spike in it. Kind of seems like a lower tier weapon. Might make a tad of sense. If, if it goes on the field engineer, I do believe that it will be one of its better choices, um, only because it has such a normal damage amount compared to the uh, like other engineer weapons, which have really weird damage values. Did um, so. did the damage values and stuff leak? No, I just spawned it in. And started okay dave has it. dave has used it <laughs> now i know you've done that in the past uh i think you, you did it with the cavs order yeah um did Cavs the damage sword, numbers match crossbow. when you spawned it um i don't remember but okay. i do know that the damage numbers matched with the siege crossbow now okay. obviously everything is subject to change they could easily do a test tomorrow with the internal testing group and be like yeah the damage on this is busted we gotta change it and then it will change um, from what I remember, the damage is slightly worse than the heavy mace in every way, mm -hmm. um, besides the stab. I and was just going to say that, yeah. That's because the stab has the spike on the end. Um, I was thinking that it would have some unique property where like, the stab is not considered a blunt attack, and the slashes and overheads are. It's not like that. It's just mm. all blunt damage. It's just even all blunt though, damage. Even though the stab is using a spike, it's still just blunt. Um, and it does have a unique special attack. So the special attack is a very unique animation where he brings it over his head and stabs forward, um, almost like an overhead, but instead of 
hitting with the side of the weapon. The and, and that's something on our past cast you talked about that you'd like to see every new weapon that comes in have its own special. So, I mean, yeah, that, I just at least think that's it, something. It just adds more variety. It just makes it feel cooler, in my opinion. Um, especially if the weapon is not going to have unique animations on its normal attacks, it mm-hmm. should at least have a unique special. And this weapon shares the heavy mace moves, so it's obviously not going to be that unique. I think in general, they're probably deterred from making unique animations for weapons because whenever they do, people yell at them. Yes. And that's what the... Uh, I, the I can almost guarantee that is <laughs> that is why they don't. <laughs> the rapier, Qatar, and quarterstaff, everyone yelled at them. Everyone's like, I hate fighting this weapon. So they probably have just given up. Since, since um, I'm mostly or, still or trying in... to make people happy. Since I'm mostly in TO, I still don't know the... Uh... The animations for the quarter staff, since I see it like once every six months. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe they're just like we're gonna make it normal by just using a weapon animation that already exists that people yeah. enjoy. I'm, I'm not opposed to that as long as it plays different. I I think from what it looks and what it sounds, so it doesn't look badass. Let's let's put it that way. It's like one no, of the yeah. least inspiring looking weapons you're ever gonna find in like medieval combat i don't think anyone was like hey i I want this game this weapon in the game but i will say the blunt damage stab sounds highly interesting stabs are always going to be the best attacks in slasher games so it's very interesting i don't know the (laughs) exact range on the stab but i think it's actually shorter than the heavy mace stab i'm not certain um but i think it is because i know that the weapon is shorter in general the only reason I'm I'm not necessarily against two weapons having the same animations. It makes sense, especially if they're the same type of weapon. I just hope that that doesn't result in one of them being better than the other, like very obviously. Because well, the heavy, the heavy mace is already mace, top tier, so it's going to be tough yeah, to get exactly. a weapon better than and that. Well, if you look at the heavy mace compared to the two-handed hammer, the heavy mace is just better. So yeah, you see yeah. very little two-handed hammer gameplay, and if you do, it's only on Vanguard. So. I just don't want a situation like that to happen. I'd rather it be unique, but if this is what it me- you know we have to do to make it to where people want to even use it, then you know, well, we do I, I am do. a little intrigued about the stab because I can just imagine just poking away through some of those team fights with a bunch of knights, and you can you can do put some hurt on them probably real quick. So that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it will be completely viable. Um, I, mean, I, they, I think they've done a better job of making their new weapons actually viable at the game. Compared to the quarter staff or Qatar, yeah. the rapier, the heavy cavalry sword, both of those are actually usable and good weapons. Heavy, so. heavy cavalry sword was a great release, in my opinion, and something I was skeptical I on. So I think they, they, I think they learned their weapon, their their lesson on the silly weapons. I think Highland yep. sword is still kind of universally just hated, just because of how it looks, and Qatar's gets virtually no play. It's kind of stupid, <laughs> and well, quarter we'll staff also. Later. Yeah, so, uh, so, but I'm intrigued by it at least because I feel like there could be a good a little gameplay area as a blunt stabby weapon. Again, it's not going to look cool, but yes, it, it will have that novelty of being the best stabbing blunt weapon. <laughs> Which we don't we don't have a stab focused blunt weapon right now. Well, yeah, obviously, but so, it, it's. We'll I mean, yeah, if, yeah. Usually, a blunt weapon you're going to beat someone over the head. Um, we'll see if it's good. So, yeah, I, I think that that at least gives me hope that it's going to be a solid, solid weapon. It's not going to be a Qatar situation where it releases and the only people who use it are like masochists or something. Like The only thing I don't like is just how uncool it is. You know, it's, it's not, not cool. Yeah, it's, it's not, not cool. a cool weapon. And I like cool weapons. Um, I think 100 percent. A good thing that you should just ask yourself when making a weapon is. Like, is anyone ever going to want this to be their main weapon? Like if they have their own O.C., Yep, and they're not, and they're not, the, they're not a weirdo. Exactly. <laughs> like, there's like, always going to be that are, one weirdo who mains it. What but. are they going to imagine themselves with if it, you know their dream weapon? And no one's dream weapon is a golden dog. No, so, not at all, not at I all. I, I think it's either got to be badass, it's got to be really interesting, or it's got to be something that's silly enough that people like it. Like if they put one of the peasant weapons on the field engineer, I could see people enjoying it. Sure. So. Why not? You know, there, there is that possibility. So we'll we'll see what we have with the weapon, and you know, I, I to me it's better than a Qatar. I'm I'm intrigued by it. So you know, we'll see. All right. All so right. shall we move along, Dave? Yeah. Um, the next topic, I guess, would be the map. So uh, with two point ten, is also going to be a new map. Unfortunately, the team objective map that was previously planned for 2.10 is going to be delayed to 2.11. 
I don't know if a lot of people knew this, but they did actually officially announce this on the private server announcement, which we'll get into later. Um, they did it very subtly at the bottom of the page where they mentioned that we were getting on official servers. It said, by the way, the next map's not going to have a TO map. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. unfortunate, but, you know, they technically told us. The new map, though, will be a dual-focused map. We don't know what it's called, but I think it's going to have dual yard in the name. And leaks say that it is a repurposed version of the tutorial map. Now, if any of you have ever actually explored the tutorial map in, like, spectator mode, you can actually see that it has a lot of land. I don't think many people other than you have no, done that, Dave. <laughs> not really a lot. Um, but there was a time where hackers were, like, invading the game, and they could actually switch the server in dual servers to the tutorial map. And that happened for a lot of people, actually. So some people have probably seen what this map will be like. If you know how the tutorial looks, you're going to know how this map looks. I don't know if it will be a good repurposing of all of the assets on that map, but I'm sure it will be worthwhile. It probably won't look ugly. The reason that this is being done, I'm guessing, is because the tutorial was actually initially planned to be much larger than it ended up being in the release of the game. And so they probably have a lot of things left over in that area. And so they're like, if we can't give them the map we wanted to this update, we might as well try and use this and for something. We've, we've talked about repurposing content before on here, that that's an easy way for them to get more free-for-all maps or take smaller objectives from other places to get some more variety. So, I mean, I'm not fully opposed to that. Not everything needs to be brand new. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it either. I mean, like, sometimes it goes really bad like Hippodrome, and sometimes it's good. Like, I guess, I don't know, Desert FFA. <laughs> I, I still haven't really played Desert FFA. Well, Sad yeah, there to you admit. go. <laughs> the, but um, I so, believe this no. is going to be free-for-all too, not just dueling, correct? Yes, there, yes. Are, there are good repurposings, like the Gallencourt and Falmeyer LTS maps. Um, Courtyard in general looks like it's just a bunch of Gallencourt assets reused. Um, but which is fine. It, it's and fine. And for free for all, that's my favorite map. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. So there's a ton of good ways to do this. Um, with the tutorial map, I don't know if it will be good, but it is what it is, right? We're getting it. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. And I'm sure it won't be bad. I think this is one of the multiple free for all maps we were supposed to get last year that now are getting just pulled a little bit into this year. Yes. Yeah, so what I find quite interesting is um, they haven't released a roadmap for this year. And I, I don't think they're going to. I think they learned yeah, a that, lesson. That <laughs> I can almost guarantee a, they won't. That scares me a little bit. Um, but anyway, yeah, so new map, dual yard. Um, moving on, let me see what we have written down here. The weapon balancing. So the weapon balancing that we have leaked to us is that the Highland Sword and the Katars are both getting buffed. The Katars are getting a range buff. We don't know how. They could be getting wider or they could be getting... Uh, longer. If they're longer, it will be easier to land attacks at depth. If they're wider, it'll be easier to land attacks that would have missed before. Um, either one is welcome to me. I'm always for Qatar buffs as long as they're not annoying for the person fighting the Qatar, because that weapon sucks. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I'll, I'll I knew that from it. from the day they dropped the patch notes that the Qatars were coming. I was like, "Yep, I will never use that weapon." Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't blame you. Um, but obviously, you know, I'm guessing that until it sees more usage or until it sees better kill rates, they're just going to keep buffing it. I'm kind of fine with that. I don't really think it needs any big buffs, just a bunch of small buffs in different areas. Like, for example, the jab, I believe it should jab collide when you headbutt someone. Um, I don't know. I would make the headbutt do a little bit more damage maybe make the special recovery faster. Just like tiny things here and there. Um, but this is appreciated. The range buff is, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm fine with that. And the next is the Highland Sword buff. I don't know exactly how it's being buffed, but I know that its damage is being increased on some of its attacks, not all. Mm -hmm. um, this is welcome too. The Highland Sword used to be super OP, and then it's been nerfed into Oblivion, and now it's completely underutilized in favor of the Greatsword. Um, yeah. And it's basically seen as a slightly worse greatsword now. Massively worse greatsword. <laughs> There's no reason to use it now. Yeah. So it's getting a slight buff. I don't really know what they could do to make it uh, distinct from the greatsword while also making it good. 
Um, but I guess they're going to try by just you know, yeah. buffing its damage and seeing I mean, what happens. The the Highland Sword originally was the ultimate shitter stomper. So <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming they're going to bring some of that damage back. That uh, I, I believe it did quite a bit more on overheads than it used to. And slashes, maybe they'll bring one of those a little bit more in line. I believe it actually um, does pretty soft slash damage now. Maybe I think like they're going to buff every attack besides the overhead. Everything besides but, the overhead. But I don't know. Like I said, completely mm-hmm. oblivious. So we'll see what happens. But we just know it's going to get buffed. The The and, Highland Sword to me was like the worst meta of the game. I always hated the Highland Sword. I hate seeing the Highland Sword. Yeah, I, I didn't like it because I think it was just so easy to use. With just Right now we have like yeah. the Heavy Mace meta. And the great sword and messer meta, and I'm fine with those. I'm fine because with that. Yeah, Love it's it. like they take skill to use. So when I get beat by a heavy mace guy, I'm like okay, yeah, that weapon's strong, but at least it takes some skill to drag that. Um, the Highland sword felt like easy mode for a Just lot of people. Twirling in third person in circles with slashes and yes. cleaving three, four people in one shot. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm not, I wasn't a fan of it. Never have been a fan of it. I think it was a stupid I, weapon addition. I, never, I think it I looks like stupid. It. I think it, it looks stupid. I looks think it stupid, plays stupid. It plays boring. I hate. I feel like it feels terrible to play with. I like I, the special. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I just it feels so clunky and shit to me. Like the great sword feels perfect. This thing, I think they missed the mark. I think the the idea of a Highland sword was great, but I know everyone's seen Braveheart. Why why didn't we like why didn't we emulate the William Wallace Claymore from the movie? That was like the perfect I think size of I, sword. I don't even like the concept of it. I don't like the concept of a giant sword that's bigger than the great sword. I think that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why I like the Braveheart version. It's bigger, but it ain't, it ain't like it doesn't look like fan, Final Fantasy. That's for sure. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Like this so, thing yeah. is straight out of uh, Final Fantasy VII, right? That's Cloud. Yeah. So I don't personally like it, but I'm happy for the people who do want to use it. I don't think any weapon should be underutilized to that degree. So I'm happy that it's getting buffed, even though I personally hate it. Now. Dave, I, I did hear a rumor that I don't know if it's true or my Discord people trolling me, but I, I heard a rumor that they're going to add bleeding damage to ambushers. Are people just fucking with me to get yeah, me pissed they're off? They're fucking with you. They're okay, okay, with you. okay. Because I was like, if they add freaking poison they, to throwing knives, I'm probably they, out for a while. 100% working with you. <laughs> never going to happen. in the chat. That is so funny. Though. Yeah, I, I was like, oh my god, the, the bane of my dis- existence, having people chase me with knives. It's funny that they just say random stuff to get <laughs> to get a reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's everyone knows me now enough to know what's gonna get me riled up. And I was like, would Torn Banner be crazy enough to do something like that? Possibly. Well, the next thing is, uh, as a result of the new map, the theme of this update and also the battle pass is rumored to be dueling and duel etiquette and just duels in general. Why? I don't know. Um, well, we don't know Ed, everything. Could we get a sudden ranked mode one v one arena drop? I I would love that. <laughs> trust me, it that would, would make the so, most sense. But I don't so I don't think it's going to happen. But no, that is not going to happen. Um, if they were to do that, that would be amazing. But they will never do that. I don't know why. They just hate me. So. I, I can tell you why, because it's probably hard to code, and it also appeals to, like, 1% of the player base. Go go sit in Mordhaus yeah, ranked duels mode and see how long you got to wait, and that's exactly why they won't add one. I know, I know. And so the, um, the update is supposedly themed around dueling. I don't know what this means. I'm guessing it's just regarding the marketing material and the um, iconography of the battle pass. And maybe even some of the aesthetic of the armor, and weapons. maybe we'll get some like rapier or something themed yeah. stuff, like maybe whatever there will the, be... the dueling classic dueling weapons are. I know that Mordhau has a training sword. Maybe a training sword will be added to some of these maps. Training sword does like three damage on Mordhau, right? Maybe we can get something like that for chivalry, which is it like actually a normal weapon, but it does like no damage. Um, or I don't we know, put, we could put Dave against another elite duelist in like a battle of stamina. <laughs> who will die first with three damage? Like a half yeah, hour, right. a half hour battle. <laughs> I got my money on hour. Dave. This man has got no chill. So it, it I mean, it, you know, it is what it is, right? If that floats your boat, I think that this is good and bad. I don't know why they've chosen now to acknowledge the dueling community. I'm guessing because they just had nothing better to do. I can, I can tell you why, because they don't have a TO map ready. <laughs> that too. Well, they've had a not TO map ready before, and they didn't appeal to us, like Hippodrome. I mean, the reinforced update. 
Um, mm-hmm. But I think the benefit of this is that we will have a lot more people who didn't play competitively actually checking out the competitive community because they're going to hop into a dual server and they're going to get shit on and they're going to hopefully want to improve or they'll just go back to TO, either or, right? A lot of people, the majority of the players don't duel and hopefully this will get them to want to at least try it out, you know? Not that it's, ever, not that it's all that, but <laughs> it's nice to expand your horizons. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think it just adds another layer of replayability to the game for people. You know, I I always recommend people hop in the free for all lobbies. Mm-hmm. I think feel like it's a lot of fun if you if you can find yes. them. So. Um, and lastly, we have the um, announcement that unofficial server support is finally coming. Again, slated mostly for 2.10. It'll most likely be alongside 2.10, as in we get the servers the same day that we get the update. So you think we're going to get these in January, February, the private servers? That would be amazing. I think at at m- most March. Um, but yes, I think that whenever the update is going to come, that's when we get the private servers. That'll be likely. awesome. That'll be um, awesome. I'm so excited for that. private servers are being done through a company called Nitrata, um, which is basically the biggest server provider for video games um, in the world. I think so. And uh, they're pretty chill. Um, I like them. And I'm totally not biased. <laughs> and I, I was going to ask, is that is that Dave's place of employment? <laughs> yeah, right. And <laughs> the, um, the servers are going to probably be a little pricey, um, most, especially if you want a server that actually can hold... 64 players at once. How, how much do you think we're going to be talking, Dave, if you had to take a guess? I have no way of saying. You know. I have no way of saying. I, I don't know. I don't even know how close to. My best guess is that they will be comparable to Mordhau prices. Which I don't know that either. <laughs> Anywhere from 20 to 100. 20 to, okay. A month. A month, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's, you know, not, not, not chump change. Not chump it's change. Not, so you it's gotta not get chump use change. out of it. Yeah. It's not chump change, especially when you consider the price of chivalry. It's actually quite um, steep, to be honest with you. Um, considering that you can get chivalry for $5 on G2A, it's actually quite demanding to expect you to pay that much for monthly. Um, and another thing that's interesting is Nitrato has full exclusivity with the unofficial servers for a torn banner, which means that Nitrato will be the only way for you to actually reserve a server for yourself. Now, this is, in my opinion, um, pretty decent because Nitrato is a good company, but obviously this means that you will not be able to host something on your own hardware, which is very bad for the modding community that, you know, hopefully will still exist by then. And also um, just anybody who likes to have control over their files. The, the, the problem with the modding community existing is they really need a platform that can reach people. <laughs> and right now they don't have that. That too. Uh, well, the idea is if, the server was on your own hardware. You could yeah, mod yeah. That server. It, like in Mordhau, you can hop on modded servers right from the server browser, just double click and go. So yeah, I mean, of course. That's so important for for getting people actually in. Once once you add I steps to, to to play something, the majority of people aren't going to go through those steps to play a modded game of Chivalry. Yeah, so. and we don't know our um, we don't know the features that will come with the mods, but in general, unofficial server support will hopefully. Uh, get the community a lot more interconnected because for example the new dual updates coming out all the casuals are going to at least try the server browser now that the unofficial Mm -hmm. server update is out Um, and they will probably hop on these servers and actually mingle with the hardcore community hardcore community being the guys who play all the time right and then they'll start talking more people get involved with the game um, seriously and hopefully the community in general will be a lot more connected because at the moment we're very separated. Um, the mm-hmm. people who play matchmaking play that and the people who play server browser play server browser. And they usually don't um, mingle besides when the server browser guys want to dominate and uh, seal club. So, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that that's how it is, but hopefully this will change that. Um, I just, I'm happy to get the old school community vibes of like you go into a server. It's just this is the server, the two or three servers you always play in for TO, and you know everyone. And it's how how communities get built, little rivalries get built, and 
I, I'm really hoping there's options that you can play with them so that you can have different servers to appeal to different types of players. So while not my thing, could you imagine if the, you could get like a, a realism hardcore mode where almost everyone dies in one shot, there would be people who are interested in that. Or are no archer first person stride as angels server i mean it's gonna be a, i know that you know, in chivalry one you were able to have a no archer server so i actually do believe that that will most likely be a possibility with these servers could, could you imagine if it was like counter-strike mod tools we could set the archers on fire as soon as they log in like it just auto burns be, them that would, that be, would be very very funny so um i guess now, if you want to talk more about the servers we can yeah we can yeah i was gonna ask dave do you, do you have any um idea on it, what we can expect to be able to customize i i know i'm expecting not to have as much user freedom as i would like but i'm hoping that we can at least put a a map rotation in we can get rid of team deathmatch if we want um, and that we can yeah. lock player perspective most definitely you will be able to decide the map that you're playing on um and I think that you're going to have almost all of the functionalities that we have in Ship 41. So that means being able to force your perspective on the server, that being first or third person, um, which will be very interesting because... No, no uh, crutches uh, for you boys anymore. Exactly. In Chivalry 1, there, most people played first person. Um, so I guess that feature wasn't that important. But in Chivalry 2, most people play third person. So it'll actually be quite interesting to lock them to first person just to have a fun event like that maybe. I don't know. Um, or even lock the first person players to third person, you know, because both will Look, be possible most likely. And having um, having those servers for each type of player sounds like a great idea. So exactly, it it sounds like a great idea, but it can also further separate the player base, which is already yeah. small. But yeah. that's a separate issue. The um, maps, obviously, you can change those. The game modes, you can change those. You could have the server be the way you want it to be. I don't know if you'll be able to change the map rotation. But I do know that you'll be able to just physically move the server to another map mm -hmm. if uh, if an administrator is online. So that being the person who owns it and whoever they assign an admin role to, will be able to just be like, I want to play on Warden Glade right now. They move the server to Warden Glade. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to have like an only Warden Glade server or an only Team Deathmatch server. Most likely you will, but I don't want to give any promises. Yeah, I, I mean that would that'd be wonderful to me. I always like the dream dream rotation of having like. Rudhelm, Galancourt, Aberfell, Lionspire, mm -hmm. Dark Forest, Falmire, get rid of Tenosha. What I would like is a message of get the, rid of the new type maps. system. I would like a thing where I could have like my Discord link right on I mean, that's stuff that used to, server. back in the day, be par for the course with the private server. Exactly. So. Yeah, no, it, it was just expected. And obviously, it was possible in Shiv 1. Let's hope that they can manage that's, that, that would in Shiv be, 2. That would be amazing, right? If yeah, you're, if you're playing in my server, you bet damn well better be supporting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so all right. that's pretty much all of our leaks for um 2.10 private and private servers in 2.10 if they come out with it that would make 2.10 worth it for me i can i could say like okay no to map like that, that makes hope, it all worth to me i hope it isn't too late the main thing is that we don't know if it's too little too late torn banner has wasted a lot of the players um that they've received over the years we are one of the smallest games with two million sales. That's a good way of putting it, mm -hmm. right? We're not a, Torrent Chivalry Two is not a small game, but I would say it's one of the smallest communities for a game with two million sales, and that's really bad. And Torn Banner only has themselves to blame. And I don't know if this private release server is too late, especially when it comes to sales. I, um, for for, for sales, I, I can tell you it's too late. For yeah, maintaining 100%. the players we have, I don't think it's too late. I think it's only going to increase the engagement and increase like what the player base that we currently have can put on, the creativity of the events they can have, and which will keep people in the game for longer periods of time. But it's definitely not, other than server renting, generating them new players or revenue. I, I would say it's yeah. going to have no effect on sales. If this was released the day of or even a year after the release of the game, it would have made a considerably large amount of money. And that's unfortunately lost. So, yeah, tough cookies. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I'm hoping they go free to play in the next year, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. We yeah. talk about it every uh, time. You know, that, that, that's my selfish desire. <laughs> Make right. me more money. <laughs> um, I guess we'll move on to our final topic. Yes, yes, let, let's, let's go. We got our final topic like 10 minutes that, here, so. Right, our final topic is that a new game 
has launched into a playtest. So it is not an alpha. It's even earlier than that. They're offering a playtest, which is a glorified tech demo called Mobius. Mobius is a competitive-focused 5v5-based slasher, or I should use the term that uh, properly explains it, which is first-person melee. Not many know, but we actually called this genre <laughs> that we play the, the first-person first melee genre. First-person slasher genre. genre. <laughs> first person, yeah, first-person melee, even. Um, we didn't even need to use the term slasher because you know, it was kind of just expected, but now a few first person melee games came out that aren't slashers. So we distinguish them now. But anyway, um, Mobius is basically CSGO combined with Mordhau. And I said Mordhau specifically, not Chivalry. This is going to have a combat system that is more similar to Mordhau, although I do believe that they do plan on making their own advancements and unique changes to the combat that will make it more enjoyable, in my opinion. I played the playtest which just launched earlier today. And it is still up, and it will continue to be up, according to the developers, until the game is released. So anybody could download this playtest and play it now if they would like. Um, and the developers actually encourage you to make your own team and actually challenge other teams in their official Discord, which is very cool, because that's how competitive they are. Um, so I think overall it's going to be a promising project. At the moment, it's a tech demo. They have one weapon. Yes. They have no assets. They have I, just combat. I, I said this this earlier when uh, when I was talking about it. Don't. There's no even textures on on the characters. No. So you're you're definitely not playing a game. This is a traditional old school, mm -hmm. early early game. But from the about two minutes I made it in the game, I didn't really get to play yet. Uh, I will say it at least it seemed to run, and it seemed to run well. Yes. So I'll, like strictly speaking on the quality of the game. The, there are no assets, the animations are limited, there's low content, the, uh, there's no music, <laughs> the main game mode isn't finished, and all of that is true. But the game is free and will continue to be free forever, according to the developers. There will never be any pay-to-win mechanics, and most likely only cosmetics will be monetized. And the developers are straight up more enjoyable to interact with than Tord Banner. They are responsive, they are open to communication, they're transparent, and they're generally more enjoyable people. <laughs> and and I think <laughs> so. I think what, what Dave also missed here about the developers is they're all melee slasher players who yes, yes, they're spent a all, all, tremendous amount of yes. time in the genre. So all veterans. Yeah. I, one of the best players ever is on their team, Wizardish, the GOAT, in my opinion. Um, and they are open to dialogue, they're open to player feedback, and they're just a joy to talk to when discussing their game. And now, um, so, we are yeah. trying to get them on the cast, boys. We are trying to. I think we have a pretty good shot of making it happen. It will probably happen. It yeah, really probably I, will. I know. We, we said when I to talked to them, yeah, we said we're going to confer in January after they get launched. And, and I've talked to one of them in a Discord call, and he was willing to talk to me for... Honestly, too long. He was entertaining me too much, in my opinion. So, and th those for us are the most fun casts because the indie developers, mm -hmm. especially, they're they're not hamstrung in what they can say, and they're so passionate about what they're making. Like you know, they they haven't yes. they're not being really paid yet to make the product. They have to mm -hmm. deliver the product to really make money. So, so you got to be really to, into it. When it comes to the people watching, I do think that you should check it out. Temper your expectations. You are not going into a game. You are going into a tech demo for a theoretical combat system, which will most likely be heavily edited before it makes it to the final um, version of the game. So don't go searching for a Chivalry 2 alternative. It's not that. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to have large-scale battles. Um, it most likely won't even be medieval. And it's just going to be a different experience that these guys want to make. Um, which happens to be in the same genre that we love. And so we obviously give them our prayers and um, yeah, we hope so they do the best. As me, me and Dave are obviously both going to play the game to some extent for how long, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm sure we're going to check it out multiple times through its development. And it's it's always in everyone's best interest if the product comes out being a quality slasher so that it creates a little bit more competition. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know me and Dave have differing opinions on this. I don't know how sold I am on the gameplay formula of the, the 5v5 competitive genre. I think it's going to struggle a little bit with players but i hope that i'm wrong in that i've said that too actually because i i don't think that they have a solid plan 
for retaining players and getting new ones. Um, if you look at games like CS2, right, and Valorant, they actually mm -hmm. have a lot of trouble retaining players as well. And those games have all the budget in the world and the fewest problems in the world. So if, the, if Mobius is not ready to tackle all of these issues, like a proper anti-cheat that works... Mm -hmm. um, and in a free-to-play game, that is yes, very a pro important. A proper anti-cheat that works in your free-to-play game, right? Which, at the moment, I don't think there is an anti-cheat. I'm sure there won't be one for a very long time. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, properly doing solo players, right? I have a lot of experience with these issues in Overwatch um, when I played Overwatch competitively, but how do you deal with solo players? Do solo players get put up against five stacks? Do they not? Do they get put up against other solo players? You know, how do you deal with that? If that's the case, will that impede on people finding matches? Because, you know, will five stacks only get other five stacks? Or will they get four stacks and a one and a solo player? Like, you understand, all of this logistical stuff, mm -hmm. they need to, to basically, they need to, like, pick a side. Yeah. And they need my, to draw a line and they need to, they need to decide what they're going to do. My, my, my biggest question mark with it has always been, even before any of that stuff, is you're taking the least popular mode from the slasher genre and putting it with the melee system that has the history, the least history of being able to retain players. So that to me, I don't know if it lines up for for being around for a long time. It might be a fun time when it's out. I will tell you but this. But how long it'll last Com is anyone's guess. Compared to Mordhau, they have simplified a lot of the combat and actually, in my opinion, lowered the skill ceiling on a lot of different aspects. Mm -hmm. I won't necessarily the game say that the game has a low skill ceiling or a lower skill ceiling than Mordhau, but they have simplified a lot of things. For example, all faints happen at the same time. You know how in Mordhau and Chivalry 2, you can vary your faint by mm -hmm. doing it earlier or later? Yes. Every faint happens at the same interval of time, whether you press the button faint button really early or really late. So that's one super simplification mm -hmm. that makes all faints the same um, timing. Then same thing with reposts. In Chivalry 2, you can decide when you want to repost. Um, you have like a 0.5 second window mm -hmm. to activate it. That's not the case in Mobius. All reposts happen at the same times. Um, the fainting window is very short. In Chivalry 2, it's very long. This means that the faint has a much smaller opportunity to come out, and it's going to be harder to trick people with faints. Yeah, so you have to basically decide right away you're going to faint. Exactly. And if you, there's no going back. You understand. You, yeah. I think it's actually like 0.1. Yeah, or well, point I, you know, I played enough Mordhau. I even played a little bit um, this month. Um, and I know you can you can pull it pretty late in Mordhau, and I know that's mm -hmm. a contentious issue in the Mordhau player base is people who are just jiggling back and forth. All, uh... Yes, so feints, I have noticed, are but much. I don't want to say extremely weak, but much weaker than they are in Mordhau. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope it stays that way. Because personally, I find swing manipulation much more enjoyable than fainting. Um, yeah, and... well, I think a lot of people, especially casual people, want to feel like they are in a actual medieval sword fight, which means you want blades to be clashing or to be actually thrown at people, not just shoulders jiggling like this, right? Yeah, so. well, at the moment, they don't actually have an art style, but they, I think they have said that they don't want it to be medieval or realistic. So I don't know what that necessarily means. I'm guessing it's going to be something like postmodern, like the finals, but for okay. a melee game okay. instead of a gun game. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, it's been a while since we've had a non-medieval slasher. So I'm all for it. Um, no one necessarily made it a rule that a, a melee game has to be medieval. No, no, but I definitely do think medieval stuff appeals to a certain <laughs> yeah, no, demographic of people. So, so there is that. Yeah, so um. I, think, I think that it's uh, probably a long time away from release. At yeah. least a year or two. Yeah. At m more realistically, three or four. Especially because, to my knowledge, these people are not being paid to work on it. They're just working on it on their free time. So, it is what it is. If they aren't working on it on their free time, they're not making any money off of it. I didn't even see a donation link or anything when I started up the game. It's just no, a, and a game. To, to me, that's that's why the indie developers are so interesting to talk to and stuff because they're not making a cent for it. This is this is it's all passion. Like, and I feel like sometimes when you have a product like that, that's where you can really feel the love in the actual game. It's not especially like, a free to play. Not yeah. not a Call of Duty or something. Of course, <laughs> where not, yeah. there, there's no passion anywhere. Well, I mean, that's how Torn Banner started. 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm very curious to see what Torn Banner is gonna be working on next with their their hundred person studio. Hundred twenty. The 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 hundred twenty. <laughs> I know the the joke is Mirage too. I I think I never played that game, but I know it failed so badly. I've said it before. All I don't is think forgiven. they can be stupid if Mirage enough. Two is announced. All is forgiven. Oh my god, every, Dave is one every... of the seventeen people who liked and played the mm-hmm. game. Every, I never even heard of the game until Dave told me about it. Every issue, every blemish, every every um, slight that's ever been taken, I will forgive it all if Mirage 2 is announced. My, my big theory is they're going out of the genre. And I, I pray to God that's not true and that's that they don't decide theory. to make like a Battle Royale shooter or something because I feel like I it's going to be epically bad. I really hope they don't. Um, I mean, now, Medieval Tarkov, you got my money. Like, <laughs> like chivalry combat, a little bit more Tarkov to style maps. Like, oh man, that'd be like dark and darker times a hundred. <laughs> I, that, I, you got my money automatically. Pre-order immediately. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, do we have questions? 